Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for January the 27th. I'm Jonathan Keensler. Today's scripture reading is found in Exodus chapters 13 and 14 and Matthew chapter 19. The title of my devotional is Powerful Hand. And we're going to be looking at Exodus 13, 3, which says, Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you went out from Egypt from the house of slavery, for by a powerful hand the Lord brought you out from this place, and nothing leavened shall be eaten. The seven-day Feast of Unleavened Bread was to be a time at the beginning of the Hebrew year in the first month when they celebrated the salvation of God. It was uh, the salvation of God. It was closely paired with the Passover, um, and it was actually a part of it. They were to remember how they were once slaves of Egypt, but God delivered them. One commentator explains, they had been the abused servants of a greater power, but now they were being freed to be the happy servants of the greatest power. I like that. The happy servants of the greatest power. That's a, a good way to, to think of our lives before, before God. The idea of eating unleavened bread commemorated the haste with which they left Egypt. They didn't have time to allow the leaven to permeate the dough. They had to bake it quickly, cook it, so that then they could, they could leave. Um, So it happened so quickly and completely that they didn't have time to let the bread rise. Based on the Passover deliverance, which we saw, um, which was demonstrated in Exodus 11 and 12, remember that the death angel actually went into all the houses of the Egyptians that didn't have the the blood of the lamb on their doorposts, um, but those that did were, were spared. So every firstborn of Israel was to be sanctified to the Lord. We see in Exodus 13, verse 2. Um, there it says, Sanctify to me every firstborn, the first offspring of every womb among the sons of Israel, both of men and beast, it belongs to me. Just as the firstborn of every household was redeemed by the sacrifice of the Passover lamb, so every firstborn son required then redemption from here on. Exodus 13, 13, it says, but every first, but every off, sorry, every first offspring of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb. But if you do not redeem it, then you shall break its neck and every firstborn of men, uh, of man among your sons, you shall redeem. You have to redeem them. Every firstborn belongs to, to God. One recurring phrase dominates the discussion. By a powerful hand, the Lord brought you out from this place. And we see that in Exodus 13, 3, 9, 14, and 16. That idea of a powerful hand. Uh, It was not by their own power or desire, but by the strength and work of the Lord. And it was what God desired, God destined. God did did this um, with the strength of his of his might. Uh, this is where God puts his, his focus, his energy on. He wants it put, he puts his attention here. The Israelites were to remember God's work of deliverance from Egypt. All that the feasts of Passover and unleavened bread memorialize find their fulfillment in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. For that reason, in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 5 to 7, Paul refers to or 6 and 7 of chapter 5 of 1 Corinthians, Paul refers to to us as even participating in in the Passover. Jesus is our Passover lamb, and we then are unleavened bread um, and before him. We're to get rid of all sin out of our lives, which is what leaven came to symbolize. God, God delivered people and brought redemption to the world through Jesus' substitutionary atonement. And since he, um, as Colossians 1.13 says, he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. Since he did that, we cannot remain in the kingdom of darkness any longer by participating in acts that are that Jesus has set us free from and that are that are really belong even to the kingdom of darkness. Today, we uphold the centrality of Christ's sacrificial work through the act of communion. We remember what Jesus has done on a regular and even ongoing basis, that Jesus is our Passover lamb, that we're set free because of his his blood on our behalf. We're made part of the people of God. We're brought out um, of slavery um, into God's purpose for our lives. 
So do you regularly take time to remember what Jesus has done for you? And in doing that, remember, remembering isn't just calling to mind, but it's preparing for action. Do you, in remembering that Jesus is your Savior, do you then, applying that to your life, do you um, ask yourself, what do I need to do? Um, how should I respond? How should I live then for him? And in that way, we bring correction. We repent of past sin um, in our life as God speaks to us, as God leads us to do. So do you, um, uh, do you regularly take time for that? And what has Christ's powerful hand done in your life? Has he delivered you? Has he saved you, set you free, brought you forgiveness? Has he given you a future and a hope? Is he with you at all times? Has he brought you into a new place um, of hope and a new, and does he have great plans for your life? And since you are now part of Jesus' kingdom, are you serving him even as he requires you to make sacrifices? And if, if, if so, what a glorious future we have as we go in the power of the Holy Spirit and we're led by and in his, his presence uh, into his promised land. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for uh, th these stories in the Old Testament concerning how you brought Israel out of Egypt, brought them out with a powerful hand. Uh, and the, the Exodus is not just a story, but Lord, it's one that foreshadows and displays the greatness of what Jesus would do on the cross for us. There is no greater redemption, no greater love, um, and also for us, no greater life that we can have in him because you've set us free and you've brought us into your kingdom. Help us to live that out. Help us to remember and prepare our hearts for action. In your name we pray. Amen.